Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video of Green Square Talks BattleBots. Joining me in this one, we got Porinog. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing quite well myself. So in this video, we will be discussing Fight Card 4 for my fantasy tournament here, as this fight card will be released and polls will be available to vote on this coming Tuesday. So we got lots of great fights on here. We will discuss all of these fights one by one, and then we will vote on whatever on what we think the outcome would be on these things. If any of these fights happen to be split, one vote each, we just throw it to the comments section, as in you just reply with who, with whom you think would win that fight, and we'll call that a tiebreaker based off of who gets the most comments. So let's begin here. We got our main event. This won't be first. We'll end with this one. But we got yeah. Aftershock and Huge, an amazing BattleBots and Robot Wars face off. Two elites that are well known for causing quite a lot of destruction here. Aftershock and Huge would be an amazing fight if we ever saw these two fight. But we'll get to that one at the end, as that'll be the last yeah. fight of this video. We'll lead it off with Hypershock and Sabretooth. Both teams have a crazy driver here. There's Gabriel <laughs> who runs Sabretooth, and then we got Will Bales who run Hypershock. Both of them, both of them are great drivers, great builders, but they are quite crazy as well. But it's yeah. always fun to watch them both. You got any opinions on this one, Bori? Um I feel like well, I do like Sabretooth. I just think it needs a lot of work before it's like a true contender like it's a solid robot but i just i feel like hypershock probably has this one yeah they did have a solid performance since we're going off if, since we're going off of series 10 from robot wars they had a solid performance in their rumble against behemoth and uh behemoth and uh donald thump but then yeah. lots of their fights after that while they were work well, as for like movement, they were working quite well. We're getting a bunch of good pushes in. Their weapon wasn't exactly spinning for quite a few, quite quite a few of those fights. It says I think they lost the drum spinner like in the middle of quite a few of those, which was a an issue for them. Yeah, I mean, with that said, they've definitely had a glow up. Like the first ever saber tooth is definitely like this saber tooth is definitely a huge step up from like. Yeah. Yeah, because like series eight of Robot Wars, and I don't remember if they were in series seven or not. I think they were in they were in they were in seven, yeah. Yeah. They came out of those without a win. And then series nine, they won through the opening round and managed to win their first managed to beat Terahertz, which was supposedly their first few wins ever. Or at least as for what they were stating in the tournament there. And then they came into series ten with that thing and even though it does, it does, it clearly still has some flaws. It was still a very impressive machine in there, the oh, best yeah, that no we've doubt. seen out of it. And so then we got Hypershock on the other side, where as of now in the tournament, as we're right, as we're right now, four episodes into BattleBots here, Hypershock currently zero and one. They did manage to get quite a few hits on Gruff. That weapon is still quite powerful, and the drive yeah. is still as fast and as powerful as ever, but then still some reliability, it, possible reliability issues. It was in loose belts as for what people said about the, uh, about the episode three reactions video. Yeah, I feel awesome. like it could go one of two ways. Either Hypershock dominates it and wins it, or it's gonna be sort of like when Hypershock fought Poison Arrow where he's like whipping, whipping Sabertooth around and then he just like dies. Yeah, I could definitely see that. That's exactly what I was thinking of. So should we vote on this one? Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to go Hypershock in a similar fashion to the beginning of Hypershock and Poison Arrow from last season. I think that wedge up front on Hypershock is just going to give Sabretooth a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I am too. I agree. I vote Hypershock. All right. So... Next up, we get Texas Twister and Rusty, and I gotta say, curse you to the random team generator, as this was their fault that Rusty's first opponent is Texas Twister here. 
not mine exactly. But still, you don't want to underestimate Rusty, as I predicted against them in my confidence thing in their fight with Sporkinok, and they were still yeah. able to do some damage with that thing. They're thing. speedy. Yeah, they're fast as well. Well, Dave, Dave Eaton is a not bad driver, too, even mm. though he, he kind of had a shaky start in that one. But yeah. overall, he did a great job in that one. He's up against Texas Twister, a massive horizontal spinner by Fuzzy Malden. He is a, He and his daughter are both great drivers and builders as well. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if they keep their front towards Rusty, they're going to give Rusty a lot of trouble. But then if Rusty gets to the back, they would definitely do some damage to Texas Twister. Yeah, I mean, Texas Twister does have some reliability issues with the weapon. Like, the weapon has died on occasion. Kind of with a lot of that, I would kind of... I would kind of almost I would almost blame their schedule too, even though because they did have quite a few hard opponents that year. But Texas Switzer, yeah, they did definitely have some reliability problems in there, but it, it was definitely a solid bot. Yeah, but, yeah. No, yeah, no, no they, doubt, yeah. Yeah. Rusty would definitely Rusty would definitely have a hard time with Texas Switzer, but you don't want to underestimate Rusty too, as Rusty is another or one that will definitely be a hard to beat bot. Yeah, I think I think I'm leaning on Texas Twister though for obvious then reasons. That'll be your vote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go Texas Twister as well. All right, fight number three. We have Bite Force and Lucky. And Lucky, this was not a lucky opponent for Lucky, as they got <laughs> one of the most unluckiest opponents <laughs> that they could have possibly gotten in this tournament here. They got, they were given bite force who has won <laughs> battle bots three times. And yeah. yeah, we haven't seen those two fight. So you never know what could happen here as many teams have pulled off the impossible before. This is so, actually kind of a funny draw that you did. Cause, cause, Fight Force took Lucky's original team captain, the, yeah. the Canada guy. Like, Fight Force took that, and they, they were like making jokes in the off season. They were like, "Oh, we're gonna trade robots." I don't. I'm. I'm assuming that was like a joke, but I really hope so. Ironic that you that you drew these two to fight each other. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like one of two outcomes is gonna happen here. Either Fight Force is just gonna rip apart Lucky. And I don't think this fight would end in one minute at all because Lucky is very well armored and defended. Yeah. They always talk in battle bots that Lucky is built like a tank, which they definitely are. They are they that are, well yeah. armored and defended here. Or I think Lucky is going to get a flip in, the, in like the first minute or two, which Bite Force does not make easy because those wedgelets that Bite Force has, they would probably come with, are very low to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, it's I too bad that we're not yeah. it's too bad that we're not gonna see either of those two bots this season as Bite yeah. Force chose to step down for COVID reasons and and then Lucky stepped down mostly because of travel reasons that were yeah. because of COVID. You got any opinions on this one? Any um, other opinions on this one or should we I vote? think I think Bite Force would probably like rip off the regulets on the front of, of Lucky. Maybe take out like a wheel or two. Yeah, I would def I could definitely see that. So should we vote? Yeah. All right. I am probably gonna vote Bite Force, but I think I I think Bite Force is gonna win it by knockout, but with less than a minute left on the clock. That's about where I am as well. Bite Force by by knockout at like two something. Although I would love to see a timeline where Lucky beats Bite Force, like Lucky is like loses all of its opponents over the years. Then yeah, we see Lucky get paired. Up. We've, see, we've seen Lucky get paired up with so many just really tough opponents, and yeah. then we watch them possibly take out Bite Force. That would, that would be, be a real game figure. changer for them. But yeah, I, I got to give it to Bite Force. Yep, same here. All right, so next up we got Expulsion and Hypnodisc. We got Expulsion and who competed in Robot Wars Series 10 with that design. 
big problem of theirs was that they were flipped on their head within the yeah. first 10 to within no not 10 within the first 30 seconds to a minute of a majority mm -hmm. of their fights they're up against yeah. hypnodisc whom we haven't seen since i believe it's robot wars series six i think i think, I think. it's six or seven it's one of those yeah one or the other of those still though that horizontal spinner was well known for causing a lot of destruction like i think I think it's the, like the first non-house robot to be well known for causing a massive amount of damage and destroying stuff as that spinner yeah. was very effective back then. It's truly so. an iconic robot. It's like when like when you ask like when you mention like a, to a casual watcher of Robot Wars like oh Robot Wars you know the first thing they're, they're going to say is Hypnodisc. I mean it never even won a championship but it's like such a recognizable robot. Yeah, like it was so close so many times. Times like they were run they were runner up in, in series three until they got flipped by Chaos Two in the grand final. Yeah. And then series series four, I believe they made the top four, I believe, if I remember right. Something like that, yeah. Series five, I believe it's the same thing. They got taken out by Bigger Brother, I believe, after they were dominating that fight for a reasonable amount of time. And then Series 6, I believe they lost in the semifinals, if I remember right. Yeah, they've always done well. They've never made it all the way, but they've yeah. definitely been a successful robot, and they've had a lot of very memorable, destructive battles. Agreed. And, like, Hypnodisc is not a bad machine, like, the, even though neither of us were ever saying that. Hypnodisc was yeah. one very well-known and probably, like, either the Hazard or the Ziggo of BattleBots. Yeah. So then we got Expulsion, which they have a very interesting spinner. Pretty much how their spinner works is that if they once once the spinner gets up to full speed, those red teeth will pop right outside, right right out of their bot, and then they'll come in with a mm -hmm. big hit. If they did manage to get some shots and like push to exit, but I don't know if we really saw much else out of them. Them, I didn't know they did get a shot or two on Coyote as well. Yeah, didn't Expulsion have like a, a totally different design in Series Nine? I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was the it was the same idea for like the spinner, but then yeah, they completely redid the design for their bot coming into Series Ten. Yeah, but um, that said, I think that Hypnodisc would get this. Yeah, my easy. vote would my vote would be Hypnodisc as well. I think Hypnodisc would win it by knockout in like a minute thirty. A, like yeah. expulsion striving hasn't exactly been the best they do have the bot like where they could do a ton of damage and stuff but yeah like they drove straight into the pit and the 10-way rumble in series 10 unfortunately yeah. but yeah love the team there it's they're so full of fun there and yeah they're super fun agreed then we got fight five, where we have Scorpios and P1. P1, we unfortunately have not seen them yet in BattleBots as of now. They're taking on Scorpios, whom we've seen two fights out of them. They are currently one and one at the moment with a, a loss to Bloodsport and a win over Perfect Phoenix. What are your yeah. thoughts on this one? I think it would tend, if we considered the idea that p1 doesn't have teething issues i think this will be a lot closer than people think yeah i f i feel like p1 would put up a heck of a fight like i've been like i know they've made a lot of big i know they've made a lot of big improvements for this one so i feel like they would yeah. definitely last a while in this one but of course that's a problem to exactly judge because we haven't seen them fight yet but i'm hoping we'll see them yeah. quite soon I, I hope so because I, I I know two of their fights for the season, and but neither of them are they? yet. Uh, one of them is is a it's a leaked fight. It's from day one. It's against Kronos that I ah uh, yes I heard it through the grapevine, and uh, the other one is a uh, Copperhead, which I oh yeah I don't think it's gonna win that, but yeah, yeah those would be two pretty good fights. Yeah, I feel like we'll see a bunch of, I feel like 
P1 would be able to get a, get some flips on Scorpios, get them on their head, even though they Scorpios clearly can self-right the use of their spinner. I feel like Scorpios, because yeah. Zach Lytle is a great driver himself, I feel like he mm-hmm. would also be able to maneuver around Scorpios or maneuver around P1, my mistake, mm-hmm. and get and get to their sides. It's with that spinner. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I think I think that that's pretty much how it would go. Like P1 might get like a flip or two in, but I think Scorpios would eventually get around to the side and like start damaging the top, maybe take a wheel or two off, you know, rip off the spoiler. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking like a repeat of like Tantrum and Scorpios, but P1 does get a few more moments than Tantrum did in this one. Pretty and... much, yeah. That's not, that sounds about right. All right. Should we vote in this one? Yeah. All right. What do you got? I vote for Scorpios. Yeah, I'm going to agree with that. I think Scorpios will win this one by a judge's decision. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be KO victory unless P1 is having teething troubles like last year, but I'm, I'm going to have faith in them and say that they don't. All right. Then fight number six, we got Battle of the Beasts. We got Sharko and Duck. Unfortunately, Duck is choosing to sit out this season for COVID reasons. We saw yeah. Sharko take on Smee in their first fight. The one thing I will say first is I think this fight will be a lot closer than what people might think. People aren't going to like what I think. <laughs> Oh, I think I know what you're thinking then. I think Sharko I think I want to hear Duck. your opinion. Let's hear your opinion. Sharko could win this. Especially with how much grip that, that that jaw has. Like all it has to do is get around get its jaws around Duck and it could probably dominate the fight pretty good. Yeah, I feel like what's gonna happen is yeah, we'll see the one thing I didn't exactly like at a duck last season was when they went up against like lockjaw and a few of the other spinner bots they like showed them their backside and that attacked them with the spike right on the top of that front there that just yeah i felt like that hurt them more than it helped mm-hmm. them and i'm like with quantum it's one thing because like it it kind of played into the it kind, even though it did play into quantum's hands there it did help them do a little more knowing that that duck wouldn't really be able to do much damage to a crusher knowing that duck is meant to take on like spinner bots yeah charco yeah. has a flamethrower right I don't, I don't remember if it does i want to say I, it does. I want to say no but i'm not 100 sure i could very much be wrong here I mean, I don't, I don't think they used it against me, but I could have sworn they, they at least said they were gonna have one. But yeah, I feel way, like yeah, I, I feel, feel like, like if Duck leads with the lifter part of it, I think they can out push Sharko and possibly win this one at a judge's decision. But if they like mm-hmm. p- specifically aim their plow out for Sharko and try to tackle that spike, I feel like they will get a ton of jabs in. But Sharko will easily be able to grab a hold of them and be able to push them around the arena. And so I think Chark Sharko would win in that situation there. But this one would definitely yeah. be a much closer fight. Yeah, I think with Sharko, what they should do in this fight is they should don't, don't even bother trying to, to lift or flip Duck. Just focus on grabbing it with those jaws. Because as you saw in the teaser with Slotbox, those jaws are very clearly like powerful. Like they can grip something real good. Yeah. Yeah, as they ha- they they set up like the bottom of the jaw area to where if they where that will help them like push around their opponents, like they could possibly grab a bite on duck and then just push them around the arena, uh, possibly yeah. into the hazards and stuff. And duck's a good shape for the jaw. Like it doesn't look like it has a lot of like surface area to grab onto, but I feel like duck being real low low to the ground and thin definitely works in Sharko's favor. Oh yeah. All right, so should we vote on this one, or do you got anything else? We can vote. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I am gonna actually go duck and a split decision in a split judge's decision, as I feel like both bots are gonna have a ton of moments, and I think it's gonna be like relatively even. Yeah, I'm gonna go Sharko in a split decision. All right. So since this one is split, to the viewers. 
feel free to drop a comment whom you think would win this one. Personally, though, I yeah, think because yeah. Duck is a fan favorite, though, when I get, post, the, when voice, I post yeah. this thing, like when I post like an Instagram poll or something like that, I think Duck's going to get the victory because they are such a fan favorite. Yeah. How Rucker yeah, is Duck's a great, win, how Rucker, the Rucker is a great dude and a great driver. Agreed. All right. So second last fight of the night, we got Axe backwards and one who the last time we saw Axe backwards, they were in flames at the from the hands of malice there that was an exciting fight and then the last time we saw Juan who was back in season four while they were hoping to come back as to my knowledge uh travel restrictions prevented them from coming which is too bad because Juan who definitely is a design that has a lot of potential to it four and two that wasn't a bad record yeah one who was one who didn't do who that well like there or sorry one who didn't do that bad that is what i meant to say their weapon yeah, yeah. wasn't exactly the most reliable as it died within like the first minute of each one of their fights but one who still yeah. has a lot of potential to it like that thing is so well armored heard up front as they were able to take it they were able to take so many hits from captain shredder here in their first fight they, they were able to survive their fight with shatter or after mm-hmm having their inter after shatter managed to puncture through all their armor and get to their batteries and yeah, yeah i yeah one who was i don't think they were knocked out even once last season as of my knowledge i don't, I don't think so because i mean they're, what were their losses one was shatter and one was yeah railgun max was yeah shatter and railgun max so. it, those are both judges decisions yeah so he's so. definitely a durable robot yeah, so then we got Axe backwards here with that spinner. The happy thing about their fight with Malice is their spinner did work this year. Function, yeah. What we saw last, what we saw in season four or twenty nine Battlebots twenty nineteen was their spinner. They would land a shot or two with the spinner, and then it would just stop working. And Axe backwards is not exactly the best design to win a push fight. That thing yeah. was working until after Malice went weapon on weapon, which was the kill blow oh, in that fight, including their axes are filled up with flamethrowers, which is what caused that fire or mm-hmm. back in their first fight. So I think if Axe, ba- Axe Backwards weapon works like how it was for 90% of their fight with Malice, Axe Backwards would put up a heck of a fight on Wan Hu here. Yeah, I think this fight, regardless, is probably going to go to the judges because I think the way it's going to go is one who's going to push Axe backwards around. It's gonna, it might get like a hit or two with its weapon. Its weapon, be- its weapon belt's going to come off because it always does, and then it's just going to be like a shoving match, which Axe backwards can't really do efficiently. All right. So yeah, should we put this one to a vote? Yeah. Yeah, we could. I'm gonna go one who in a close judge's decision. I think it will be una- I think it would be unanimous, but it could very easily be split or even go in Axe backwards favor. I'm thinking one who in a unanimous judge's decision, but in a fairly one sided fight. Yeah, I feel like Axe backwards would definitely if if this was Axe backwards season four design rather than their season five design, I think Axe backwards would do way worse than what it would do yeah. possibly now but also yeah, i wonder if they so would um one. use the wedge that they have because apparently they have like a wedge configuration as they reveal the fight photo from a second fight it's having with captain shredderator uh yes yeah that would definitely be very interesting all right so then we got our main event we got aftershock and huge one thing I I was hoping to determine, but I don't know for sure. I have a guess, but I don't know for sure. Can Aftershock, if they get to like the middle of huge, like what like where Whiplash is trying to be, could that spinner possibly hit the control area on huge, like how it was able to with Gabriel when those two fought in Robot Wars Series 10 here? Yeah. As of what the two of us looked at, I believe the answer is no, but I am not 100% sure on that. 
Because the truth is, if they can hit the control area on huge, that would be a real game changer if these two were to fight in real life. They are too short, though. They could maybe, like, go underneath and, like, do, like, a really sharp turn so they gyrate and, like, get the top of it. Uh, that's that's de- that's definitely a possible method for aftershock here. So, I mean, so as long as huge doesn't like destroy their weapon, I feel like the big concern I would the, have uh, for bar. the big concern I would have okay. for aftershock in this fight is that armor to the left and the right of aftershock spinner, which is what huge mm-hmm, would probably best. be aiming to hit. Mm-hmm. Like carbide has gotten through it twice. Ironside yeah. three got through it at when those two fought back in series nine. It is possible that Aftershock could be very vulnerable in those spots. So I feel like if Aftershock wouldn't have the height to be able to hit like Huge's control areas, I feel like they would probably try and go to the sides. I just go for the wheels, yeah. try and get some big hits in there, possibly get some key damage in there, like what Hypershock fight force and many other bots who have fought huge or have, tr- have tried to do yeah i feel like their best bet would probably be to use the bar that way they could get more bite on the wheels and go into like into the spokes of the wheels hopefully maybe get a few hits in there maybe knock huge in the air a little bit sort of like what mammoth did yeah i could definitely see that happening and yeah i don't think the disc would work in their favor for that fight Probably not, but that, yeah, you never know what Will Thomas would be planning is I imagine he would have a plan if he came in with a bot like Aftershock and or Aftershock itself and fought a bot huge or bot like huge, huge like this would still be an excellent fight. Like these are two excellent designs from like BattleBots and Robot Wars because I was sad to see Aftershock not make at least the 10 way rumble and Robot yeah. Wars series 10 and but still aftershock like it literally if i came with if i came with my own design and fought against robot wars teams the two teams i'll be scared of most would be carbide of course and then aftershock Mm because aftershock is a very menacing spinners as if you've seen series nine you've seen Mm -hmm. what that thing did to saber tooth those two fought twice Yes, Aftershock oh. Spinner does have a lot of power to it. Well, hopefully, we'll see them see them at the next season of Battlebot. I mean, I don't think it's going to be Aftershock. Cause, yeah, um, as I heard, that, Aftershock they'd be yeah. like, "Oh, it looks like Endgame," and then they, we de- as we definitely it. heard that they were going to try that were were that they were going to try to come with something to the next season of Battlebots. Yeah, they said something about multi weapons, which I'm intrigued. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't think it's interchangeable be weapons are yeah. relatively interesting. All right. Should we vote on this one? Yeah, I think I think that huge would probably take this, but just barely. I think it would probably knock off with some of the the armor armor on one of the sides and maybe knock them out. But it would probably take like two minutes to do. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with that. Uh, I feel like huge is gonna tear through that armor like what carbide was able to do but aftershock mm-hmm. will definitely put up a big fight in this one and won't go down easy in this situation I was actually leaning towards aftershock at first and you reminded me of the the armor thing with carbide and I was like oh yeah yeah that's kind of my big concern if these two were to fight but it would it would still be an excellent fight I yeah regardless like this would definitely be a main event worthy fight if these two were to meet like in battle bots oh yeah absolutely i agree all right you got anything else you want to say about that fight or the fight card pori no that's up that's said everything all right so yeah thank you for watching this episode this fight card will be released and polls will be set up this upcoming tuesday so be sure to vote on this thing be sure to comment down below who you think would win between Sharko and duck as that one was split between the two of us and <laughs> vote duck they're gonna yeah. vote duck <laughs> <laughs> yeah you never know that fight would still be really close and oh yeah i agree yeah Thank you for joining me as always, Pori, and I will hopefully see you for the next video. I'll be there.